if you're a physician and you want to find like-minded physicians who are entrepreneurial and maybe you're at the beginning of your process and you want to learn from doctors who've already been there, done that, how would you like to learn from a doctor who started up her own media company, built their own meditation practice, published their own book, set up a line of children tableware, become a successful keynote speaker? Obviously, those can be very invaluable, and you want to check out this summit that's coming up April 23rd through 25th. It's called the Female Physician Entrepreneur Summit, but it's open for everybody. I've got in the program the founder of the summit. She's going to talk about it, why she put it together, and what you can learn by attending. My interview with Dr. Sharon McLaughlin on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, this is Dr. Mike Wu Ming. Welcome to another edition of Bootstrap MD. Today on the program, a special treat. One of my favorite people in this weird physician entrepreneur space that we're in. I've had her as a previous guest. She's a board certified plastic surgeon and she has a summit coming up that's really exciting. We're going to talk more about it. It's called the Female Physician Entrepreneur Summit that's coming on April 23rd through 25th. Um, she let me know about it. I said, I need to get you on the podcast. I'm also going to be asking her some projects that you, that's coming up that I think would be really exciting, especially if you're someone who wants to be able to refocus on your business and your life. She got something that it's really cool that's coming up that I'd like to share with you today. I want to welcome to the program, Dr. Sharon McLaughlin. Sharon, how are you doing? Dr. Wu Ming, thank you so much for having oh. me today, as always. I'm doing well, Mike. I'm excited about the summit. I'm excited about the upcoming book. I'm excited to share with other people and just help. That's the bottom line. Whenever, when it comes to helping other physicians, that's what gets me most excited because I think with this day and age, with burnout being so high and career dissatisfaction being so high, it gives me purpose. I've had so many failures throughout my life, what I consider failures. And if I can save someone else time, then I want to be able to do that. And I've been able to grow a network. And there's a lot of people that I know that can help with others. So I just want to give them a platform to be able to share what they're doing, just like you're doing with your group and with your podcast. Just let physicians know that there's other opportunities out there rather than corporate medicine or rather than being a cog on the wheel, just to know that there's other opportunities. You may not want to make the move today. Perhaps you're you know, 100% happy. But if tomorrow comes and you find yourself unhappy, just know that there's other options and that there's people out there willing to help you. Well, well, I always told if we, we didn't have failures, that means we weren't trying. So I've had a lot of failures in my life and most entrepreneurs, actually all entrepreneurs probably did. Now, for those who are listening to you for the first time or maybe watching this video on our YouTube channel, uh, just tell us about yourself. How did you become a, a female well, I know you being female, a physician entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think it started with my dad, really. He was excellent. I think it all has to do with our upbringing. He was, he was a man of integrity. He loved helping other people. He had a business. He used to deliver oil. But he was, you know, just going around as a little girl uh, with him on the oil truck, making deliveries and all, we'll seeing how, how he interacted with people, seeing how um, he actually... The first word that comes to mind is he brought joy to people. And you would think, well, he's a delivery man. But though his, he was so very personable, very hospitable. And he, he loved talking to people. He really loved getting to know them. So, yes, he was delivering your oil. Yes, he was fixing your oil burner. But he truly got to know his customers. And that's what I remember growing up. I wanted to go into medicine. But I always knew that I wanted to do things outside of medicine as well. So for me, I started with some skincare and I did some scar gels. I did a lingerie line. I've tried different things, but it always comes back down to, you know, really what you're passionate about and what's going to make you happy. I believe that if you're not thoroughly passionate about it, you're not going to be able to pursue it because even though it may sound like a good idea, maybe it's a way to make money. If you're not passionate about it, there's always bumps in the road, no matter what you do. So unless you're passionate about it, it's really easy just to give it up or, you know, kind of get off that path. 
So you started the Female Physician Entrepreneur Facebook group. And if you don't join it, go check it out. And we'll put a link on here. What was that? How, when, did we, when did you start that again? And like why? That. Yeah. About four years ago, I started it. I wanted to be surrounded by like-minded people. One of the things that I believe that if you're struggling or you feel stuck is to be around people that are similar to you in the sense that they have the like the same likes, desires, passions as you. And I really didn't have that in my life. I, you know, I have a wonderful husband. I had friends that are in medicine, but they really didn't have an interest in entrepreneurship. And I did, and I found that was a void in my life. And I figured if I was interested, perhaps there were other physicians interested. So I started this group and it really took off rather quickly. I, it, eventually, I have to be honest with you, in the beginning, people were joining, but it was very, it was crickets. And it all, I think, you know, in, in this summit, we're going to talk about community building. But I believe one of the things you have to do is make it about the other person. And I just kept on adding value as much as I could. But honestly, it was crickets for a while. And I was like, even though people were joining, I really did question it. I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Because people, the numbers were going up, but people really weren't engaging at all. And I just kept pursuing it. And then, it, you know, it, it did take off rather quickly after that. And I w- I'm happy that I've done it. I'm happy, you know, so many people have reached out over the years and said, you know, this group has really given me ideas. It's really why I'm where I am. So that's nice, the feedback. But even if I didn't get the feedback, it's just nice to know that you can, again, it comes down to helping other physicians. You know, I feel very, um, I think a lot of people are very concerned about where medicine is right now and what do we do about it at so many levels. So I really would like to bring people together that are working in legislation, that are doing things, working with the hospitals, that are doing things, working um, with the health plans and kind of really network. And that's what this the summit is about as well, but it has to do with my Facebook group. When I see that someone's really trying to hard to make a change, I am so happy to promote them. As you know, the way that Facebook is going, it's kind of hard as far as doing links as much as we used to in the past. Facebook doesn't like it. You're off their platform you're, or, or you're off their group and they kind of penalize you for it. So I, another reason why I wanted to do the summit on a separate Facebook group, and I figured as long as I was opening it up, might as well open it up to everybody. I really would like to make connections. I think that we move faster when we network with other people. So to answer your question, I started the Facebook group because I needed, I had avoided my life and I wanted it filled. I wanted to see if others were interested. And I believe that we learn and grow faster together than we do by ourselves. As a doctor, I wasn't used to asking for help, especially when it came to subjects outside of medicine. But then... I found physiciancoaches.com. In an instant, I found hundreds of experts to help me in all aspects of life, on areas I was afraid to ask. Dealing with burnout, starting a side gig, money management, even help with my marriage. And the best part? Nearly all experts are physicians themselves. After reading their profile and a quick chat, I knew I found the right mentor for me. At physiciancoaches.com, Help from professional colleagues is just a click away. Yeah, and, you know, I've had many guests on, on the program and, you know, a number of them, you know, point to your group as you know, really the starting point, to, you know, for where they got started and say, hey, there are other people, you know, that are like me. I'm not just crazy trying to think of this. I'm trying to invent this. And, and, and really, that's really what you need as an entrepreneur. And even for myself, I remember you asked me to come onto your program. I'd been teaching other entrepreneurs, but not really too much on the physicians because I wasn't sure, you know, if they would be interested in kind of the crazy stuff that I'd be doing. And you invited me and you're so generous. And, uh, you know, we've had a great relationship, uh, you know, talking about all our different projects. So when you told me that you had the summit, I said, hey, you, you know, let, let me know more about it. Let my, let my folks know more about it. So let's talk about the summit. Uh, why did you create the summit? And tell us uh, what we can learn when joining the summit. There's so many great people in the group. And it always comes down to, geez, who do I ask? Who do I not ask? You know, I wanted, it's very diverse, truthfully. It's kind of like, you could say a hodgepodge, but for me, you know, in my head, I'm like, we need the speakers. I wanted it where, okay, you start where you're at. You're a physician, you're unhappy. It's really targeted for the physicians that are unhappy. So you're a physician, what do you do? Speaking is really great. So we have a couple of speakers, a TED speaker, we have Rami coming on who has 
really built a career on keynote speaking. So she's going to be talking about that. Um, you could start a book, right? You could start a book, you could publish a book. So we have Jasmine talking about that. Just really where you are right now. And if you now, can give the, the, the names of some of the people who like, you know, you know, on a basis, but if you have the, the full name so they can kind of check it out. Absolutely. It's all on your webpage. Please. Yeah, no, on the website, it's at the um, fpestrong.com slash summit, but you can get to it from the first page as well, the homepage, FPE Summit. And if you're doing a website, always think about that. Everything should be from the homepage onwards. So we have Dr. Lulu. She's a TED speaker. She's going to be talking about that. We have Dr. Rami talking about keynote speaking. Uh, Navitika, she is a poet, so she, and she's also like a published poet. We're going to be having a reading from her, one of her poems about people struggling. And then she's going to be talking about becoming a poet, which I think is really important. We have real estate investing, both syndication as well as direct buy, like a, a direct ownership, such as like short-term or long-term rental. And that's by Param, and it's by also Miranda Phillips. Back to now, okay, so you have an idea of what you want to do. How do you get out there? How do you market it? So there's a couple of things. We have Manasa, who has started a whole line on children's, um, how do I say this, like dinnerware, plateware, you know, it's unfortunate that children are exposed to plastics. It's an endocrine disruptor. So she's, de she's designed a line that are really, you know, safe for children. So she's going to be talking about how she got her product to market and how do you get, you know, PR for a product. The same thing, even if you want to be a spokesperson, how do you get out there? You have an idea, you have a book, a product service, how do you get out there and market it? So she's going to help with that. We have Amy Shaw also speaking about, you know, getting out there, doing social media, because she's made some great connections with large companies, uh, makeup companies, health, health companies, doing yeah. shakes and, you know, getting her name on products. I could go on and on. We have some coaching, talking about coaching, building communities. Nisha Mead is talking about that, how to negotiate, because that's such a... I, I hate to say this, but I think women aren't as good with negotiation. It's not something we learn as we're growing up. So we have Karen coming on talking about that. She's a physician coach. And Laddie Fat, she's going to be talking about financial freedom because it's so important. I believe as physicians, we make decent salaries. We should be putting money away for investing and just so that we have options in the past. Want me to keep going? Oh, this is amazing. Well, we could check it out on your website. It's again, it is the Female Physician Entrepreneur Summit, April 23rd through 25th. Uh, the price, I think you said about $1,500 or $2,000 for the summit. Is that correct? No, it's a free <laughs> online summit. It's a free, you're so great, Mike. It's a free <laughs> online summit. It I should really, be because yeah, I know some of these speakers pay a lot of money. If you want to do consulting and coaching, you know, it's, it's, it, it's well worth it, but it, it's not, you know, cheap if you would like to, to, to talk with these. So getting the opportunity to hear from them, uh, you know, on, from the speakers is, you know, some people say, well, the summit's well, it's free. You know, it really comes down to, you know, what you want to put in and, and what you get out of it, you know, th there. And uh, I really feel more people need to be taking advantage of the, these opportunities. What say you? So I'll be honest with you. When I started the summit, it's all about networking. I want links. I want to hear about your businesses. I want people to work together and collaborate so that the, my goal is that, yes, you're going to listen to the speakers. You're going to get some ideas, but you better network with some of the other members there. And I'd like everyone to come out with relationships that they had after the summit that they didn't have before the summit. And what, what did, and just so the, the listeners know, how will they have an opportunity? Because it is a virtual summit. How will they have the opportunity to network? All in Facebook, um, as far as putting posts there and comments, and I don't care if you take this offline. I prefer that you don't message people if they're not asking to be messaged. But listen, Mike, this is how we met, right? Like we met through Facebook and so many wonderful things can happen. I can tell you, you know, I do fundraising, right? For um, mitochondrial diseases. I've raised thousands of dollars doing the things that I'm doing strictly from Facebook, you know, and it's really... It, you can do anything. The sky is the limit. What's not, what is a problem and always will be an obstacle is how do you get it out there? And there's people willing to help you with it. So take advantage of it, you know, make those connections. It's the fastest way to grow. Now it is called the Female Physician Entrepreneur Summit, but is it open for men to attend? It is. It's open for everybody. You know, once I started putting this together and I was looking at the speakers, I was like, you know, 
we should all benefit from this. And I believe, again, being that I wanted the summit to network, otherwise I would have just kept it in my own group. But being that I want networking for a lot of sharing, links, I don't care, um, it's important to have other people involved too, men and women. You, we're going to grow faster together. So this is, this is great. Now, I do want to focus on, on your own businesses. You've got, you got some projects. You've been working on it. Uh, tell us about Mind Lull. Tell us, what, what is that? Yeah. What is the you've got? I am either, <laughs> I can't say I'm ever slow because I'm not, but I'm always going at a fast pace. Like even the summit. Do you know how long it took me to do this? I'm giving myself two weeks. Like I had this idea last week. I'm like, okay, put out some messages, people like I'm interested, and then we'll put it together. I did a weight loss summit about three years ago. Same thing. Third, like we had no joke, 32 speakers. I did a lot more for that summit because everyone, you know, I can build on websites and all everyone had their speaker page and all that. And this time around, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. That took up too much time. I need to promote this. I need my own sanity. So that's just how I am. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are not focused. They have all these great ideas, but where do you really focus? So I'm in the process of um, creating a planner as well as a workbook to really answer some, like it has journaling in as well, really ask those questions that are going to make you think, really plan out your day, plan out your week and plan out your month. And it's going to be over 28 days. And you could say, well, 20 days isn't that much, Sharon. For those people who kind of feel like they're all over the place, it's a start. And I don't believe in overwhelming. I believe in small. If you truly feel that way, like you're overwhelmed and you don't know where to focus, start small. So I had said, you know, four weeks is the max because I've had people telling me you got to do a quarter one. I'll do a quarter one. My, my plan is to do a series, but I really want to touch on the people that just can't move forward. They don't know where to go ask those questions, kind of give you some ideas of what you could start doing and then take it from there, plan it out, do journaling, you know, at least once a day. How do you, what's that morning routine look like? Kind of mapping out your morning routine for you. And then it's a tracker too. You know, where are you at the end of the week? Where are you, did you reach goals? And if, if not, why not? You really need to focus in on that. Yeah. I'm, I'm such a fan of, of journaling and planning out my morning um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we try to do this and then we, you know, some few days I fall off and that's usually when I'm the least productive is, is when, when I let it go and giving an opportunity to be able to have, you know, a site that allows you to do this is very important, especially if you've never done this before. Now it's coming out. Uh, we don't, it's not ready yet. Correct. Uh, where can they go to get more information or is it, uh, you're going to let yeah. us know when it, no. when it's coming out and I can let my group know. The, the website is mind lull, L U L, like mind lull. Mm -hmm. It's that giving our brain a lull time, a quiet time to really just focus because I believe that's how we focus. Just giving, it's not, you can't do what I'm doing in a quiet time. And I've learned to actually factor that in. Like I need those quiet times because it's when I'm most creative. And when I feel like I'm stuck, it's usually because I've been go, go, go and over, over the place. Really want to like center myself bring it back to me and what needs to be done to, to move forward. So you can find it on the website at mindlull.com. I have an opt-in there. There's some um, you know tips as far as focusing. There's an ebook there that you can sign up for. And then if you're on that email list, I will send out when we the book actually launches on May 3rd. And I love that you're building an email list. We've been talking about that, I believe. <laughs> Mike, it is so important for those people out there. You know, I always like, you really have to do what you preach. Right? I don't always preach about building an email list, but because right. Facebook, I'm so on it. And um, with, but I never did build the email list. I built a Facebook group over 8,000 people and I never had an email list for it or one that I didn't push. And now with Facebook logarithm changing so much, I'm like, yeah. oh no. I really need to change this up rather quickly. So I'm, yeah, to enter the groups now, you need to, you know, give an email. It's really important. Um, if there's changes at all, you won't even see it if I publish it in any of the groups. So I want an email to be able to connect. And I don't spam. I don't send around crappy stuff. So it'll all be valuable information. That's pretty much how I run. Perfect. Yeah, I know. You know, with, with marketing, sometimes we kind of forget all the things that we should be doing. Even when I started out my practice, you know, uh, practice advisors saying, uh, you know, 
do you have an email list? Oh yeah, I should probably, you email them. Oh yeah, I should probably do that. So, you know, it, it's kind of what, one of those things, but it is so important. So we've got this, we've got MindLow, we've got the summit coming up. Anything else uh, that you want to share or listeners to know about? I really don't, Mike. Just for them personally, if you're not happy, reach out to others. There's no reason to stay unhappy. I'm telling you, you know, years ago, maybe it was, I think it was different. People were still doing things outside of medicine, but there's ways that you can actually stay in medicine. One of the talks that I have for the summit is actually being really smart about running your business. Because I know when I was practicing, I didn't know the back office. So Sandy Weitz is actually going to be talking about building up your practice. Remember, it's all about staying where you are right now. What can you do? So as far as me, no, because I'm really concentrating on the summit first, then the book, and really taking those breaks and really focusing. It's going to be about helping others with their quiet time. And if that's the case, I need that quiet time as well. So that's what I'm well, focusing on. Thank Sharon, you. Sharon, you're all, you always come from a source of giving, and it definitely shows. Go ahead and check out her summit. It's a female physician entrepreneur summit. It is open to everyone. It's coming up April 23rd through 25th. We'll have a link where you can go to find out more information. Thank you again, Sharon. Thanks for st spending time with us today. Mike, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And thanks, guys. You know, if you need to get motivated, don't just try to do this on your own. Like Sharon said, it's all about networking, finding other like-minded individuals, and keep moving forward. Mm -hmm.